was singing and the whole disrespect that happened with us, our, our icon junior bands. Okay, yeah. As you know, Big Stone, Claude Sinclair, is very close to the family and friends of uh, our brother, Junior Biles. He even had a fundraiser for him uh, that was about a year and a half ago or so. And he's very, very committed to the whole project of um, Junior Biles. Also, Muta Baruka over the years has been helping quietly, you know, to aid um, Junior Biles. Big Stone is a community activist and does a lot of great work in our communities with our artists and, and even beyond that. So at this time, help me welcome our revolutionary speaker. His name is Claude Sinclair, a.k.a. Big Stone. How are you doing it? Oh, we had a wonderful interview uh, two days ago, and he's telling me it's gone like how many 6,000 views on YouTube. I interviewed him. Oh, okay. I interviewed him on Roots FM, and it was really, he's a very um, charismatic person. So I'm always happy to interview him. But thanks again, my brother. Bless you for your great work. All right, so I see there's a stage over here. First of all, I wanna first of all I wanna say a very special good evening to each and every one of you. I see the icon Fred Lock sitting right over there. We honored him a few years ago with a lifetime achievement award. See, we don't wait for our icons to pass away and then we talk great things about them. We do that when the icon can hear it. So it is an honor to be speaking tonight in front of someone that I grew up with, Fred Locks. All right, so it is an honor. Marcia, how are you? All right, my name is Claude Sinclair for you who don't know me. I was born July 3rd, 1957, which makes, me, which makes me 62 years old, and I will be 63 come the 3rd of July. Now my life is a long one. I grew up poor. I went to school barefooted. But guess what? That didn't deprive me of what I know I can become. At age six, I was a member of a Cub Scout. Then I was nine, I was a member of the Boys Brigade. Then when I was 12, I was a member of the Montego Bay Boys Club. I took it one step further. And I became a member of the Jamaica Defense Force when I was 17 years old. Then I took it one step further because the money wasn't that good. And the Jamaica Defense Force, only $40 every fortnight, 1975. So I said, let me just jump over up on the other side and I just did Jamaica Constabulary Force, which they were paying $367 a month back then in 1976. Yes, I am. Anyway, I migrated to the United States after spending five years in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. I migrated to America, this great big land of America. When I got there, I got real wise because I found out that the president after spending four years, they were multi-millionaires. So I started to turn my and make, uh, make fashion. I got involved with dealing drugs and all that kind of stuff. But while I was doing that, I recognized that I'm a black man suddenly in the United States of America. And I said I wanted more for my legacy. I wanted more for my children. I don't want to end up in prison. I don't want to end up behind bars and become a uh, a ward of the state. So what I did after I bought myself a nice big house for my wife and three children in the United States and I bought one in Montego Bay, I said I'm going to give up this game because I never got arrested for anything that I've ever done. I moved back to Jamaica after learning extensively about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington and all the great freedom fighters. But what I recognize and understand that all of these great freedom fighters, Malcolm X, uh, Nelson Mandela, Steve Bantubico, they were all motivated by one man, and that is the right honorable Marcus Garvey. Yeah. I became so curious, I said, wow, Mr. Garvey motivated all these great Malcolm X and so on. I want to know more about this great man. So I studied extensively and found out that Mr. Garvey is one of the greatest men that was ever born on the planet Earth. I decided to take his teaching and use the power of my mind, and with the power of my mind, you can do anything. And that is why I continue to teach Mr. Garvey, teaching the black people, poor people, how to use the power of their mind. Anyway, fast forward, I became a record producer, because I'm musically inclined. 
and he decided to go into show business. Going into show business, I brought the son of Marcus Garvey here in 2012 for the and then the government picked you back on it and tried to embarrass me because that time I was just growing my lock. You know what I mean? Picky picky head. You know the way the friend. <laughs> and the government said, well, I look a picky picky head rest the world. They can't bring the son of Marcus Garvey to embarrass us when they should have brought him in 2012 because the Honorable Marcus Garvey was celebrating 125th Earth Strong at that time. We all know that every 25 years is very significant to anything. 100, 125, 150, and so on. They totally ignore Mr. Garvey because they were celebrating the 50th anniversary. When I brought the son of Marcus Garvey here, they started to piggyback. Everybody started to push me to the side. Come out to rest there, boy. You know, but they never understand so well equipped and well capable of handling any situation. Anyway, Dr. Garvey, we did a symposium up by the university and he embarrassed the government by calling me on the platform and said, you can go on YouTube, my name is Claude, simply type in Dr. Garvey and you'll see the rest of it. He said, come on up here, Claude, because a lot of people piggybacking on your back, trying to say that they're the one who brought me here. But in truth and fact, you put Marcus Garvey's power into action and invited me here and embarrassed the government. I felt well about that because they didn't give me anything <laughs> towards his coming anyway. Following the year, I brought the son of Steve Bank to Biko, in Kosinanti Biko, because I think I can do anything I want to do. Fast forward to 2000, uh, what you call it, maybe 16, 17, I started to inquire about one of my great, great singer, Junior Biles. And somebody told me, I think it was Walder, that hey, Mr. Biles is not doing too good. He's, he has mental issues and so on. So I took my camera, not disgracefully, but respectfully, and I went looking for the icon. When I got to his house, it was very clean, smelled fresh and everything. Nice house, old family took extremely well care of him. But I said, we need to do more. There's a lot of money being owed to Junior. He has tremendous songs like Beat Down Babylon, Fade Away, A Place Called Africa. You know, and Curly Locks and all that. So we sat down with the family, Bev and Janet and his father. Junior by his father was alive at that time. And we plan to give Junior Biles one of the biggest credit, the biggest award, the biggest recognition that he has ever seen. I reached out to the Honorable Bob Green because the Honorable Marcus Garvey said you can use other people's money if you use the power of your mind and do anything that you want to do. So I just started to use some people's money. I called up the Honorable Bob Green and she recognized that, hey, it is about time we recognize one of our icons. He was born on February 2nd which means he fits in quite well into Black History Month and Reagan Month. Why not celebrate him? The contact TVJ, they loved the idea, gave him a one hour thing on TVJ on his birthday, which was abnormal, you know. And we appreciate all that. But we said we need to give him this concert. Anyway, we pulled through, we call a lot of people, Dennis, Isis Miller, Earl Chinna Smith, Nine, we just call people and I beg people because I, I can't do it by myself. I don't have the money to do it, but I know I have the will and the power of the mind. And everybody started coming to Fred Locks come in, uh, he come out, came in, Half Pint came in, Turbulence the Future came in. People start coming in and just pouring the outlook. I said, We need more than that. We need to get a GoFundMe for June of March. We opened up a GoFundMe today, it stands at almost 5,000 US dollars. All right. And we said we're going to do this thing for Junior. Boom! We did the concert. That was that. Then came this video. A few days ago. And what hurt me to the core of my heart about this video was the fact, it's not the fact that they asked Junior to sing. It's not the fact that they gave Junior $1,000 or even offer him 50 because it's, it's a thought that counts and not the amount. So I'm not looking at the money. But what really bothers me was when after they gave June a thousand dollars and he did a beautiful rendition of Fade Away. I've never heard him done it before. It was picture perfect. They wanted more. They start to quarrel amongst themselves. Come on, but the members said a thousand dollars and give you enough. One said, well, I'm going give you fifty dollars enough. And I'm saying to myself, whatever they started out with took a different avenue. <coughs> it took an avenue of disrespect because now they want Junior to do an album 
for 1,000 Jamaican dollars and 50 Jamaican dollars. Well, you should just wrap up my money, nice little thing, and just keep to Junior. And if you want to do a one tune, you know what I mean, fan base, there's nothing wrong with that. Then I've seen other people invading the artist's privacy by actually going into his yard just to get some views. And that touches the core of my heart. Now, tonight I want to talk to you about. There are another artist by the name of Ernest Wilson, which I intend to help. One of the biggest voices in Jamaica, uh -huh. Ernest yeah. Wilson. I love that man. He's one of the greats. Another person I also want to help is Harold Butler, one of the greatest keyboard player that was ever born in the history of this country. He actually writes songs like One Step Ahead for Barry Salmon uh -huh. and for Cynthia Slash, Love Me Forever. You must know the, the greatness of the man. But I say we don't respect our icons. We just give them up. The government, you know, they don't even care. The Chinese, you know what they do with their icon? They cherish their icon. They make their young ones sit around their icon and try to learn as much as possible from the icon so they can pass on the tradition from one generation to another. That is what we lack. We also lack the fighting spirit of Sam Sharp, Paul Bogle. Nanny of the Maroon. We have become dormant because we have killed over 1,400 people last year. This year we have, all, we, have, we have killed over 10 people, women. This year we have killed four babies. This year we have killed over 60 something Jamaican already and today is just what? So I'm saying where is that power that we once had? We need to bring that to love. We need to get back to where we all started many years ago. Get back to when Fred Lass was singing in the dance hall because the dance hall wasn't the genre as they tried to place it the dance hall was the place where we come together and socialize and just have a great time a man meet a woman get close you can feel her heartbeat listening to Fred <laughs> and other artists that was how it is to maintain that love and that togetherness but now the dance hall has become a genre of music and also you see 12 people over there dancing men 12 women over there dancing, women, and there's no connection. You can't even hear the heartbeat of the woman or the man anymore. Recently, they killed a dancer. Her name is Bumper. They was doing this acrobatic stuff on your head tap. I don't know. We've never done that. I don't know if anybody back in the days have ever seen that in a dancer. But a woman on her neck trying to expose her private part and another one jumping through her legs and a mishap happened. And she died instantaneously. That is dangerous. So we say in Jamaica, protect our icons, protect the great ones, the Fred Locks, cherish them. You'll never see a Fred Locks again. Seven miles of Black Star Line is an item that is sung right across the world, in Africa, in Europe, in the United States of America, France, anywhere that you can think of that reggae music is played. Seven miles of Black Star Line. It's the, a matter of fact, it is the national anthem for the UNIA as far as I'm concerned. As, as, as I'm concerned. So when we see a Fred Lux up close and personal and being able to touch him, we should love him, honor him, respect him, idolize him, because we might never get an opportunity to see the light of this chubby. Come, <laughs> we can see a chubby, huh? There are many more. So what I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, after I've seen all the abuse that they did to Junior, and what is happening to my country? I'm only one man, I don't have the money. But I'm Marcus Darby equipped. I use the power of my mind. And you know what I'm gonna do this year? Because we're not gonna do a Junior Bias concert. You see, I don't think the family is ready. They need to get this foundation going and get things started. So next year we'll be stronger and Junior Bias Foundation will be assisting other artists like him as well. So we're waiting for that. We're not gonna rush into it. So with my spare time this year on the 22nd of February, I'm gonna duplicate, but not really duplicate because Ma, Bob Marley did it uh, on the 22nd of April 1978, the One Love Concert in the National Stadium. And uh, his one love concert was politically motivated because, you know, people were killing people left and right, politically in Jamaica. So I said, listen, this is 42 years later. We're going to have a one love concert, but I'm going to put something onto it. I'm going to put one love Jamaica. 
Now this concert is not politically motivated. This concert is a humanitarian gesture of us showing love for each other. It is not a peace concert because we did not create the war in the first place. It is not a unity concert because we did not create the division in the first place. This is a concert of love. We, going back to the 60s and the 70s, when we can respect our women, love them, not kill them, honor them, worship the ground that they walk on, and hope they reward us with a little, you know what. <laughs> but we always have that, you know, respect for our women. So come the 22nd of February, I've taken step to invite world acclaimed motivational speaker. His name is William King Alice. He's a 30-year-old young man that his mother died of a heroin overdose. His father is currently in prison on a triple murder rap. And he is sleeping in and out of shelters, eat out of garbage many times. But the reason why I love this young man is because he acquired the skill of Mr. Garvey, the same thing that I acquired, self-reliance, being able to do for self. And with that, he has become one of the top motivational speaker in the United States of America. His fee is about 20,000 US dollars to speak. When I told him about the plight of my people and tell him that for the last 20 years we have been killing our people. For no reason, sometimes you hear a man chop up a woman, a woman chop up a man. You know, this has happened over and over again. And, and it's getting from bad to worse and it's not affecting the upper class. It is affecting our people right down here. We were up on the ground. He said, Big Stone, I'm going to waive all of the fees of 20,000 US dollars. And I'm coming to Jamaica. And I'm coming to Jamaica on the 18th of February. I will be in Jamaica from the 18th of February to the 1st of March. I will give my service to the Jamaican people because guess what? Kings and queens comes out of this country. An African recently said Jamaica is a place that kings and queens and prophets and prophetess are born. We are the greatest warriors, the greatest thinkers, the greatest mind, the greatest musician, the greatest footballer, the greatest culture. You know what I mean? The greatest of everything. So. He'll come here definitely. And I did something even more because the Honorable Marcus Garvey said, Big Stone, you have to think big. If you're in a house and there's no door or windows, create one. So I went to South Africa, reach out to my sister in Jessica Mbangini. Guess what? Jessica Mbangini is confirmed to come to Jamaica on the 9th. Oh, she'll be here on the 6th for the Bob Marley thing. And then she's flying back into Jamaica on the 19th for One Love Jamaica concert. So we have two international force coming to share the same stage with Fred Lacks and all the others. We have King Yellowman. We have uh, Freddie McGregor. We have Peter Metro. We're working hard to see if we can get Barry Simon and uh, Marcy Griffiths to be a part of this because guess what? It is free. It is free for everyone to come in. We don't want your money to come in to hear this sermon on the mountain. We just want you to come in and know that we can get back to the doctrine of love. Remember that kind of love that we Jamaica used to have? The sweet potato love. The Carmel Parish kind of love. The blue dress kind of love. The sorrel kind of love. You remember them kind of love that the ginger kind of love. That is the kind of love I want my country to get back to. Because guess what? I gave up my green card. I told my wife, I said, listen, I'm coming home. She said, but you're a madman. How are you going to leave the house in the world, in the car, and the this and the that? I said, listen, John F. Kennedy said in 1961, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. But the knowledge that I've gathered, learning about the great Marcus Garvey, I want to come back and educate some youngsters and make sure that they understand how powerful a legacy that they have. And you know what I did? In 1998, I met a young man. His name was Greg Nesbitt. You know who he is today? Nesbitt. One of the biggest artists in Jamaica. He won my talent competition in 1998. Now, everything that I tell you, because I'm a vlogger, is on YouTube. I have over 3,500 videos 
to substantiate every single thing that I say. Because we know, growing up in the United States, we must document our thing. Because if we say we know Fred Lacks and there's no proof, like I came here tonight and said, I awarded Fred Lacks with a Lifetime Achievement Award. None of you have ever seen that, but you can go on YouTube and just Google Fred Lacks Awarded Lifetime Achievement Award by Claude Sinclair and bam, it must come up. because we recognize him and we document it to the best of our ability. I don't want to keep talking too much, but I just want to let you know this. Jamaica is the greatest country on the planet Earth. This is the Garden of Eden. I'm telling you, I've lived in the United States for almost 30 years. I've been to Guyana, I've been to other parts of the world. And everywhere we go, as soon as we open up our mouth, they lay the red carpet. I am a king in Guyana. When I was, oh, Mr. Sinclair, big stone, oh, come over here. The, the Papa Pat is there, come right there, right? And they treat me with the ultimate respect. We must learn to treat each other with the ultimate respect. I've never, ever seen a man or a woman that I don't love. I might not like his ways, I might not like how he does things, but I love you, my brother. And we need to say, I love you more and more and more. If a man looked on the next man and said, yo, friend, like, you know, we love you, my brother. Here you the power. I'm going to play number two, you know. Man of love, man of love. What do you mean man of love, man, brethren? We must love each other and respect each other. We might not have the same uh, uh, agreement on certain things, but we can respect each other, each other's opinion, and we can just safely live with each other. So, my message here tonight, I grew up poor. I went to school barefooted. I didn't wear my first underwear till I was 12 years old. They used to call me boy back. I'm not ashamed of talking those things. Now I have over three dozen underwear. Right? I used to go barefooted. Uh, seriously. I used to stay, sleep on a Kaya mattress. And I never used to stop peeping in bed. When I was 12 years old, I couldn't stop with the bed. Every time I go to bed, I dream about the thinking to a tree and the night breathe and there goes the bed again. So I know about chink. I used to kill them. My revenge was when I get up in the morning and mama say, Oh God, take out the mattress and sun it. What do you say about that? So we take out the mattress and we get a piece of two by four and beat it. Bam! Bam! I wonder if you can see the chicken that I run all over me. I'm just getting wild upon them. But guess what? All them chimp bites that I got, I always knew that I'm a king. I always knew that I can become anything that I wanted to become. I remember when they had the school play and they wanted me to play the role of a policeman. My mom had to borrow a next door neighbor's shoes. And then guess what? She used a spoon and put it down. So my foot, in the shoes, I saw my foot full up in the shoes because they were a size seven and the shoes are five. No, I live in a place named Enfield St. Mary. And we have to walk. There was no 19, in the 1950s going on, early 60s. There's nothing there, like no car, no light, no nothing. So we had to walk from Junior Penn all the way to Enfield to go to school. By the time I get to that little bridge, I reach a big stone right there. My foot start to burn me. My feet ease off the shoes. And you know, if you ease off the shoes, your foot swell up. So you can't put on back the shoes. So through a bar, my bar, I have to hold on the shoes. When I reach at the standpoint, I have to wash my foot. You can't go in a school with dirty foot them time, man. You get to beat them dead. And ladies and gentlemen, I did the part of a policeman. Barefooted. And many years later, I became a policeman. <laughs> so, it's not where you come from, ladies and gentlemen. It's not how you started, but it's how you end up. You are beautiful people, kings and queens. You are the epitome of greatness. Out of you, come every other race on the planet Earth. And we know that for a fact. We know you can get the recessive from the dominant, but you cannot get the dominant from the recessive. So we are great people. Let nobody fool you. You're one of the greatest people on the planet Earth. I want to say I love you all. Thank you very much for the invite. I'm a little bit anxious. 
Phil said Junior vibes, right? Because out of that negative video, let me tell you something. You see the video when I'm a post with Junior vibes after him my chicken back. You think me that can kind of chicken back will get a great legend? You crazy steak and lobster and, 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 and anything that he wants, that's what he should get. So I, I, I'm personally ashamed of these people, but guess what? We turn stumbling blocks into stepping stone, negative into positive. So when, when Denise Isis Miller gave me that opportunity to speak on the radio station, I told him the truth. I said, Junior Biles is okay. His father, Junior Biles Senior, left a mansion. You all know where that is. But Junior has this habit of walking around. He's not a cripple. So he's gonna, from time to time, if he has a few dollars, walk on to the store, get a cigarette, and come back. And then guess what? He has this habit also of lying around. If you're going to Junior's yard, you see him all on the ground, on the veranda. You can just beard him and put on him clothes and then just lie down. That is the king. We should give him that right and honor. He lies wherever he wants to lie. We must protect him. If we see him, wash him off, clean him up. Because his sister Janet told me, you know how he lost his eye? He lost his eye because some kid didn't recognize who he was. They tried to take his sneakers and they hit him in his eye and blind him in his eye. That's how Junior lost his eye. And guess what? I said, I'm going to let the world not recognize the name because remember we didn't have social media back then. So everybody know boom boom, ba boom ba boom 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 boom. And everybody know fade away, but they didn't know what fade away person who have done that song look like. So what we did, what we did then is, was to bring Juno by his face to the four corners of the earth. I know that every person who sees him, the ones who, who ridiculed him, has helped to make his GoFundMe page start to gain traction again. I looked at it, somebody gave $100, another person gave 50 another person gave 25 another person gave $487. Wow! US! So, oh, US dollars! So out of this negative, we turn negative into positive. So I want to thank you very much because I've overstepped my time. Thank you, Denise, for this opportunity to be able to come here and sit in front of kings and queens, in front of royals. I'm a bridge in the royalty. All of the items are royalty. And we'll prove that come February 22nd, when William King Alice and Jessica Emmanuel grace the stage with King Yellowman and all the other greats. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I didn't bore you. No. And remember, I be a foot big stone in that school. I'm in a shame about it. Where are you going? Uh, give it up for give it up for big stone, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, those of you who don't know, it's the late Janet Sinclair's brother. You know that, right? Oh, I think you have told. done a lot of work in um, You still have a Miss Mahogany? But we're going to do it with you. We're going to do it with you. We need you. You were there at the last one. Yeah, man. We're in, we definitely let the girls them know, the young girls in the schools and the community. Like, listen, we're not, we're not bleach. You're black and you're beautiful and you don't need to add or subtract nothing to that. So we definitely embrace that. No bleaching. No bleaching. No bleaching. Uh, Dan Omar, for DJ Dan Omar. Give, give it up for Dan Omar, no man. Give it up for Dan Omar, no man. Into a just of a play at the right time. Every week it's there. Alright. Okay. So, this next one is for you. Oh, that's for the boy's birthday. Or featured okay. okay. You know, we normally embrace the on the spot. Yeah, more. Yeah, then we move the spotlight. Right. Then we go so, feature. Help me make welcome. Miss. Miss. Who comes? Who comes? Who comes? The beautiful Nina Carl. Say it again. Nina Carl. <laughs> 
Nina Come on, give it up for Nina Tar. Come on, give it up for Nina Tar. Come on, Come on, give it up for Nina Tar. Come on, give it up give it up for the beautiful, beautiful plus plus. I love her song. Nina Tar. Give it up for her one more time, please. Thank you so much. Good evening, yeah, everyone. How you doing? You're supposed to pass my place. Where you from? Where you parking? Yeah, 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 where you